Learning is the relatively permanent change in behavior, knowledge, or capability, or attitude that's acquired through experience. So whenever we're talking about learning, we're not really talking about any kind of temporary change due to things like disease, fatigue, or injury, or maturation, or drug. Now, like I said, it's a relatively permanent change. So that permanent change is definitely going to be reflected in the brain. Uh, our brains are plastic. Now, I, I don't mean that they're you know, made out of plastic. What I mean is they have that property of being changeable. That's what it means to be plastic, is that it can change. So your brain constantly is changing. And whenever you learn new information, your brain will change accordingly. So learning new information results in what we call long-term potentiation. This just means that synapses that are communicating with, you know, when neurons communicate with each other, that synapse, that connection between the two neurons will become stronger and stronger and stronger. So the more two neurons communicate, the stronger that connection. And this, can, this kind of strengthening of connections between neurons can result in dramatic changes all throughout your brain. And every time you learn something new, these changes are occurring. So there's basically three kinds of learning. You have non-associative learning, sometimes called like a cognitive learning, where you are learning about you know, the importance of various kinds of stimuli in the environment. Then you have associative learning, which we're going to talk about in a lot of detail in the next couple videos. There's two basic kinds of associative learning, but with both of them, you're just learning about how stimuli are related to each other or how certain behaviors can result in certain kinds of stimuli being produced. And then you have observational learning, which is learning through observing the behaviors of others and the consequences of those behaviors. So first I just want to briefly talk about this non-associative learning. So with non-associative learning, you're, like I said, you're learning about stimuli in the environment and whether or not they're important, you know, useful, things that you should know. So you're just kind of gaining information about the world. You can think of this kind of, you know, non-associative or cognitive learning as a kind of higher level learning that involves thinking about things, thinking about what's going on in the world, thinking about this new information you're receiving, and really trying to understand uh, what's happening and potentially anticipate the future. And oftentimes this kind of non-associative learning involves uh, one of two processes, either habituation or sensitization. So habituation, that is when you kind of stop caring, you kind of stop noticing the presence of a stimulus because it doesn't really have much meaning. So you, you don't, the, the habituation is when you have this kind of a decrease in behavioral responding because you've been repeatedly exposed to a particular stimulus. This can also happen whenever you're repeatedly e exposed to a stimulus that there's nothing you can do about. So that's an example of uh, what we would call like learned helplessness. So if you're, if you're always exposed to something unpleasant but you, th you don't believe there's anything you can do, you'll kind of learn to give up. You'll learn to just accept it. And we're going to talk a lot about learned helplessness in a future video. Now the opposite of this kind of habituation would be sensitization. And that's where after you're repeatedly exposed to a stimulus, you start to you know, notice it more and more often. Uh, this can happen because you, you know, determine that this stimulus is an important one or it's something that's potentially harmful and avoidable. Then you have that associative learning. Like I said, we'll talk about this in much more detail in the following two videos. But basically associative learning is when you form kind of these kinds of simple associations between stimuli and response. So those two types would be classical conditioning, 
where you're just basically associating two stimuli with each other. And then operant conditioning, where you're modifying behavior based on the consequences of that behavior. So if you want to see more of a particular behavior, you should reward the individual engaging in that behavior. But if you want to see less, then you should punish that behavior. And then finally, there's that third kind, observational learning. So observational learning is whenever you acquire a behavior or modify one of your behaviors after you've observed somebody else engaging in that behavior. So this can often involve uh, modeling or vicarious conditioning. Modeling is when you simply imitate in, uh, the behavior of someone else. Usually the person you imitate is somebody that you identify with or care about. But then with vicarious conditioning, now you're basically just learning certain behaviors by seeing you know, the consequences of those behaviors when performed by others. So it's when you learn by observing somebody else's mistakes, for example. Like if, you're, if your brother screws up and breaks something and gets into trouble, you can learn from that by just realizing that, hey, if I do the same kind of thing, I'm also going to get into trouble. So this, all this kinds of observational learning, it's definitely uh, best explained by what's called social learning theory. And social learning theory was largely developed from Albert Bandura's classic Bobo doll experiments. I have a link to uh, a description, or like a little introduction to these experiments in the comments below. So make sure you check out, check out that video. It's really interesting. But just the basic idea of this social learning theory is that whenever people learn, it, they don't learn in a vacuum. You know, learning is a social thing. It takes place in a social context. And learning can incur, occur entirely through observing other people, observing their behaviors and the consequences of those behaviors and things like that. So even without you know, actually engaging in any behavior, according to social learning theory, we can learn a wide range of new skills and techniques.